Yo, what's good? It's D. Scaladayo, and I'm back with another fight night analysis and prediction. I, I pretty much skipped 223 because that whole week was crazy, but we back on it right here with this uh, Poirier versus Gaethje card. Um, I'm gonna do these four fights on the main card. First fight we have is Michelle Waterson versus Courtney Casey. It's an interesting fight. Um, you have Michelle Watterson. She's coming off a couple losses, you know, so she's definitely looking to get back in the win streak. And Courtney Casey as well, she's coming off a loss as well. So both of these fighters are going to be hungry to get back in the win streak. Um, break this fight down, Michelle Watterson. Um, she's she's on the smaller side of a 115 pounder, and Courtney Casey is on the on the bigger side of a a 115 pound division. You know, of course, Courtney Casey, she's going to have a 5-inch height advantage and a 5-inch f- reach advantage as well. So, um, that's going to be definitely an obstacle an obstacle that Michelle going to have to overcome in this fight. Um, skill-wise, striking, um, I feel like it's going to be a, it's going to be a difficult fight for Michelle Watterson on the feet. You know, she likes to use her karate kicks, you know, but she's going to be the, the much smaller opponent, so she's going to have to find a way for her to get inside and we typically don't see her fight like that you know and Courtney Casey she's a pretty decent striker as well um I think she's gonna be definitely the stronger and more powerful fighter in this fight yeah she's gonna look look together put together her hands and I think she should I think she should want to keep this fight standing I think when it comes to the grappling she's competent but I think Michelle Watterson has the grappling advantage um, Michelle Watterson, she lands about 2.6 takedowns a fight. Courtney Casey doesn't really doesn't really uh, grapple a lot. Doesn't really go for takedowns a lot. Um, if Michelle can take this fight to the ground and get top position, I can see her doing some work. And Courtney Casey, she only has a 25% takedown defense, and that's abysmal. Um, but it might be from low sample size, so maybe we'll find out what her takedown defense is really like in this fight. Um, I think if this fight stand, stays standing, I think Courtney Casey will win. I just think with her reach and being more powerful, I think she's going to be uh, the better striker. And I expect this fight to be mostly a stand-up fight. So for my prediction, I'm going to go Courtney Casey in this fight by decision. I'm going to say she wins by decision. Um, the next fight we have is Carlos Conde versus Alex Oliveira. Um, Alex Oliveira, he's replacing Matt Brown. Slightly short notice. Um, Carlos Condit, he came back off his hiatus uh, with a loss to Neil Magny. So he's going to be really looking to win, you know, get back in the win column in this fight. And Alex Oliveira, this is a good opportunity for him to um, hopefully get back in the rankings, you know, after coming off that uh, crazy fight against against Yancey Medores. So yeah, to break this fight down, uh, striking wise, both are really good strikers. They are mainly strikers. Both have knockout power. You know, both are very long, accurate strikers as well. So I think on the feet it will be very interesting. Um, Carlos Condit is extremely durable. You know, very good pace he fights at. Alex Oliveira, uh, very powerful. Um, not as durable, so I think he's really gonna have to mix it up in this fight, you know, because I I favor Carlos Condit in a strictly stand up fight. Um, grappling wise, uh, Alex Oliveira is I think is gonna be the better grappler. Carlos Condit, he's known for his uh his trash takedown defense, you know that's been his Achilles heel in his whole career. Uh, takedown defense is less than forty percent. You know, and Alex Oliveira, he lands a little over three takedowns a fight. So, I think that's going to be very important for him in this fight is to land those takedowns. Um, Carlos Condit, he has submission skills, but it's going to be very difficult for him to catch Oliveira. Oliveira has pretty much been improving his grappling ever since his fight against Donald Cerrone. I feel like he put an extra emphasis on his grappling. and He's become a pretty strong grappler himself. Um, So, yeah. I think Carlos Condit, he has to work on that takedown defense. He has to keep this fight standing because 
if Alex Oliver gets top position, he can get off on some ground and pound, and and he can maybe submit Carlos Condit. You know, because Alex Oliver he's turned into a a pretty strong a pretty strong wrestler. So yeah, for, for him to win, Carlos Condit is gonna have to keep this fight standing, and and apply the pressure on Alex Oliver and catch him with something. And for Alex Oliver, he's gonna have to he's gonna have to mix it up. You know, he can strike with Carlos Condit. You know, I, I believe he's a striker first. So he can strike with Carlos Condit, but he definitely wants to implement use of his takedowns. So for my prediction, I am going to go with Alex Oliveira in this fight. I'm gonna go Alex Oliveira by decision. Um I think he's he knows that Carlos Condit has bad takedown defense and he's gonna try to take Carlos Condit down. He's gonna take him down, lay on ground and pound, um, maybe look for some submissions. But yeah, I think Alex Oliveira is going to take this fight. Now for the co-main event, we have an interesting fight. We got Israel Adesanya, the Niger boy, against Marvin Vittori, the Italian. Now this is a really good fight. Israel Adesanya has a lot of hype behind him. Uh, has a lot of high-level kickboxing experience. And Marvin Vittori, he's a young, he he's a young up-and-comer. Um, I believe he's very underrated. I, I believe this fight is much more competitive than uh people are giving credit for to break this fight down striking wise we know Adesanya in this middleweight division he's pretty much gonna have the striking advantage over pretty much everybody I believe he's he's pretty much gonna have the advantage if it stays a striking match um extremely extremely accurate he's not a one-shot guy but he's extremely precise Anderson Silva like with his preciseness very aware, very fast, you know, very good defense is striking as well. You know, I've noticed in watching all his kickboxing fights, very good defensive awareness as well. Um, Marvin Vittori, also competent on the feet, uh, decent power, but he will be at a disadvantage. He's giving up, he's giving up uh, six inches in reach. So that's really going to play a part as long as this fight stays standing. Uh, for the grappling wise, Adesanya, he's shown to have pretty good takedown defense you know we're gonna see how that holds up as he moves on uh further in his ufc career you know and he's shown that he has the ability to get up even after taking after, after getting taken down and marvin vittori is a pretty well-rounded fighter himself i believe he definitely will look to take this fight to the ground and look for a submission you know he has 67 percent uh submissions from his win so I think that's going to be a major part of his game plan. If he can do that, we'll see. I believe he can land takedown on Adesanya, but he's going to have to keep him down. You know, and Adesanya, he's going to have to stay active. He's going to want to put the pressure on Marvin Vittori to make his takedown defense, to make, to make his takedowns um, weaker. He wants to put the pressure and keep Vittori on the back foot. And Vittori, he wants to apply the pressure as well. He wants to get in Adesanya's face. He doesn't want to fight this fight in range where Adesanya is going to piece him up. He's going to pick him apart if he fights this fight in range. So Marvin Vittori, he needs to get in the chest of Adesanya, put him against the cage and beat on him and look to get that top position and look for a submission. Um, it's an interesting fight. I believe it's a much more competitive fight than people are giving credit for. Marvin Vittori, he's young. Uh, and he's pretty well rounded as well, so I believe this is going to make for an interesting fight. It's going to be more competitive than Adesanya's first fight, that's for sure. So for my prediction, I'm going to go with Israel Adesanya by third round TKO. I believe uh, Vittori will get him down earlier in the fight. Um, we'll make him work. It's going to be interesting to see how Adesanya's uh, how his submission defense holds up in this fight. But I believe he will uh, pick Vittori apart. And I think in, by the third round, he will be able to get that TKO victory. Now for the main event, very a very interesting fight. We have Dustin Poirier against Justin Gaethje. Two heavy hitters. You know, two guys who go for the knockout. It's going to be an interesting fight. Um, to break this down, I think this fight is going to go go down to Dustin Poirier's uh, superior technical ability versus Justin Gaethje's durability and ability to recover. Striking wise, Dustin Poirier is a much better technical striker, much better boxing. 
He has he has openings that he lit that he gives. You know, he likes to brawl a little bit, but he's smart in his uh he picks his part where he wants to brawl at. And Justin Gaethje, we know his style is the constant forward pressure, uh, heavy leg kicks, and just looks to just to lose looks to brutalize his opponent. Comes forward, you know. So it'll be interesting to see if Justin Gaethje switches up his style a little bit after taking that first loss to Eddie Alvarez. Will he come with the same approach? Will he look to use his wrestling a little bit more? Um, yeah. Striking wise, Dustin Poirier should have the striking advantage. I believe Eddie Alvarez laid the blueprint on how to beat Gaethje. You know, attack that body, invest in that body early. And I think Dustin Poirier can implement that same game plan even better than Eddie Alvarez can. So I think if Dustin Poirier invests in that body early, he can definitely set himself up for the finish later in the fight. And Justin Gaethje, he's gonna wanna he's gonna wanna invest in that leg early. You know, he didn't do it as well as I thought he would against Eddie Alvarez. But I think that's a unique skill that he has, the ability to take that lead leg out early, you know, and that sets up his knockouts later in the fight as well. So I think both of those fighters are going to have to make those investments early. Um, Dustin Poirier, tough. Um, Gaethje has the better chin and the more durability, you know, and that's what makes this fight really interesting. Um if Dustin Poirier can maintain through this fight, because if Justin Gaethje wins, it will be a award of attrition and a and a victory from attrition. Um, grappling wise, both are really decent grapplers. Justin Gaethje rarely really wrestles, um, but he's a high level Division One wrestler, All American wrestler, and Poirier has shown to have really good grappling as well as he's shown in his last fight against Anthony Pettis. I don't see much. Uh, I don't see much attempts for a takedown. Um, you might see one in, in, you know, in just the heat of the brawl. You might see a, a takedown attempt by either one. But I mostly see this fight staying on the feet. You know, Justin Gage, he has really good scrambling ability. Really, if he get, does get a takedown, he pops up and he scrambles immediately. So he does not uh, accept bottom. You know, so this is an interesting fight. It's going to come down to... Like I said, Justin Poirier's superior technique versus Justin Gaethje's durability, you know. So, for my prediction in this fight, I'm going to go with Dustin Poirier in this fight by third round TKO. I think his superior uh, his superior technique is going to is gonna win him this fight. I think he'll uh, make Justin Gaethje pay for his openings, you know. He's going to attack that body, and I think he'll catch him with something. Later in that third round So I'm going to say Dustin Poirier By third round TKO So yeah y'all can like, comment Tell me what y'all think Subscribe if y'all want to I'll be doing all the fight cards Peace and salute